Alright, so today we're going to be going over the best film camera from Nikon there ever was, which is the Nikon FE2. Right here we have my old Nikon FE camera, which is the one that I originally started with. And now it's kind of falling into pieces, but I still just keep it on the mantle just to look at it because it makes me smile when I see it. So, um, no, but for serious... This was the first film camera that I ever bought and used and it taught me a lot about light and how to use, you know, film cameras. Now, um, the insides of it actually broke. I made a tutorial on how to fix it a while ago, but after a while of the camera getting jammed up and stuff, it, it eventually broke. So now it's just always winding, whereas a regular film camera, you know, you should click it and it should stop after the first one. So. After it broke and it seemed like it would be too expensive to fix, I decided to go ahead and move on to the Nikon FE2, which I picked up at my local camera store here in Boston um, for around $175 with the camera and it came with this lens, or no, it came with this lens actually, which is a 50 millimeter um, f1.8 lens. This is a really good lens for portraits and I still use it mainly only for portraits, but it's a really good lens specifically for that. It's super sharp. Um, I'll throw some pictures up now with that I use with this lens specifically. And I'll always go back to this when I'm shooting, um, you know, details, skin tones, or just something for fashion or portraits. And a little while after I had gotten this camera, about a year into using it, I was on a trip in Japan and I knew I wanted a new lens, specifically a 35 millimeter lens. So I picked up this lens for around $50 and it's an F.2, F just 2.0. And this is my go-to lens. I always have it on the camera now. And I use it for portraits or just street documentary, whatever I'm shooting. Um, it's super, super clean, super crisp. And I, you know, I just stick with this all the time. I also have a UV filter on it too, just um, to make sure I get the exposure right all the time. But let's go ahead and just get into the Nikon FE2 and why it is the best film camera on the market from Nikon. Uh, so the first and foremost reason that I would give is just because of the build. It's all metal. I've had this camera for about four years now. When I got it, it was in you know, pristine shape, it was completely black and everything. You can see I've scuffed it up quite a bit, but even after dropping it, after, you know, um, having all my all this time in my bag, in my luggage, wherever it was, it's still in really good shape. It still shoots just like it did the first day I got it. And, you know, to me, that's all that matters. If it can still do its job, that's, that's really important. Um, in terms of uh, design and the actual build of the camera as well, it's not as small and compact as a Leica camera would be, but at the same time, it's not as expensive and it's an SLR. So because of that, you're going to have to have a little bit more um, height to it and a little bit more kind of, you know, width with the lens and everything. It's, it's not all going to be built inside of the camera like it would be on a rangefinder. So for, for an SLR camera, this is actually like what I would consider the superior build just because it's really compact. It fits in my bag wherever I go, and it's just, you know, super easy to carry whether you want to hold it from the side or on the lens. It's just super easy to have in your hands, use it, shoot, and everything like that. One of my favorite things about this camera is the tonal range that, you, that um, the camera offers. So, and what I mean by that is on the exposure ring, you can see all the different um, shutter speeds that this camera offers. When you first start buying 35 millimeter cameras, especially SLRs, you might find that they only go up to um, one one thousandth of a, of a second rather than one four thousandth, which really helps, especially if you're shooting in bright settings. So that's super, super helpful on that end of the spectrum. But also if you look at the other side, it goes actually to eight second exposures as well. So if you want to shoot at nighttime and take eight second long exposures that's also super helpful and you can you can you know really use this camera for whatever you want not just one or the other 
and a lot of the beginner film cameras that you'll get into kind of won't offer that much tonal range. Another one of my favorite things about this camera is the fact that there's actually a built-in light meter. Um, when I first started out, I, I knew that there was a light meter in there because when you look through the viewfinder, you can see along the left side of the screen um, the different you know lighting patterns that are associated with the shutter speeds. But in order to get this set up, you have to un undo your battery by you know using a, a coin or a lever or something unscrewing this and putting in one of the flat batteries. And once you have it set up, you'll be able to use the light meter. And having this in your camera is super beneficial because you don't have to carry something you know, with you and always be metering the light. You can just look through, see your shot actually there and meter the light and then you know take your shot right away. And that's super beneficial, especially when you're shooting street photos or you know documentary photos where you need to be moving fast. You can just do everything, you know, right there. If you want, you can, one, one thing I like to do with the Nikon FE, um, the FE2 especially, is just to set my aperture when I'm shooting street and then only worry about um, the shutter speed while I'm, you know, moving, moving around shooting. That way I'm not always worried about changing the aperture and then the shutter speed and then focusing. That way I'm only focused on shutter speed, focus, and then shoot right away. It kind of just makes your process a bit quicker and it really helps me. So this camera is really great for street photography. And let's just go ahead and take a look at some of my photos now. That way you can get an idea of, you know, some examples from this photo or from this camera. One of the things that I always notice when I'm looking at the Nikon FE2 photos that I've taken in the past is just how, you know, how different I'm able to make a lot of them come out. And a lot of that is due to the wide tonal range that I talked about before. Because you can push the camera to so many limits, whether it's long exposures or really, really fast exposures and bright lights, um, you're able to get a lot of a lot of different kind of color combinations a lot different you know um, exposure variations and things like that that really help out if you're trying to build a diverse portfolio um, you can see a few of these portraits you're able to get super crisp and sharp you know almost digital like portraits if you want to and at the same time when I'm feeling kind of experimental or feeling a bit like I don't know just out of the ordinary trying to do something different you can really push the camera to those limits as well get something super grungy super artsy and really just you know find find yourself as an artist while using the camera because it offers so much so much room to create with which i find is you know it's a really beneficial thing for the camera One of the last reasons why this camera is really um, on my favorite list is just because of the fact that, you know, you can do so many different things with it. I love taking multiple exposures with this camera and I have a tutorial on how to do that below. Um, and it's just really fun, especially when you're shooting fashion photos or kind of artistic photos to just like continuously overlay photos on top of each other without really knowing what the outcome will be because when you develop it and scan it, it just looks so cool. And you know, it's it, it's a different process than if you're just to take a bunch of digital photos and then put them over each other in Photoshop. So that's one of my favorite things to do with this. Let's just go ahead and get into loading the camera as well so that you know how to get started with it once you get your own Nikon FE2. All right, so loading the camera is super easy and we have a full tutorial on it that I'll link in the description below. But just to go over it quickly so we have the full, you know, startup for the Nikon FE2, let's just go ahead and jump into this. So what you're going to what you're going to want to do to start is hold right on this lever right here. So you can see I, I swipe it right. As you swipe it right, pull up on this. And then if you pull up strong enough, your camera will open. That way, so this is called a dual mechanism, a dual opening mechanism. That way, if you accidentally pull this up, you're not gonna be able to open up the back even if there is film in it. Um, you have to kind of deliberately do it. Once you have the camera back open, go ahead and leave that up just so that you can get the film in there. 
And what you're going to want to do is place your film, what I call, upside down with the leader strip facing right, like that. Go ahead and place it in there. Once it's in, I like to just put this down so that way it's, it's just in and out of the way. Now go ahead and pinch this leader strip to make it easier once you, are, once you get it on the, the take up spool. And just go ahead and pull some of the film forward. And here you can see there's um, a little take up spot in the spool right there. And just go ahead and put the pinched film right into there. Once you have it in, you can just click your shutter, pull forward, and it should just, you know, automatically line it up. It'll straighten itself out. And do it a few times so that you make sure your film is wound up. A few times I, I haven't done that, and you open your film up again at the end of the roll, and it still hasn't, you know, shot anything, and that can just be a pain. So once you've done it a few times, go ahead and close the, black, the back, snap it in shut so it's locked in, and then here you can see I'm at S, so that should be the starting frame. Um, it, it depends, I've tried this uh, you know, a ton of times and I never know exactly when I'm on the first frame, so sometimes I just like to wait until the shoot starts, you know, take a few shots at the beginning, that way you can get one with a nice film, a film burn in it as well, because I, I think that looks cool every once in a while, but that's how you get set up with your Nikon FE2. Um, from there, you're gonna wanna set your exposure to whatever the box the box speed was. This was Kodak 400. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up and just slide it over to ISO 400. And if you wanna push it or pull it at all, um, you can go ahead and set it to a different speed. There's also an exposure compensation tool right here where if you press down on it, you can go, you know, go plus or minus one or two stops. Um, and I know a lot of people do that with exposed film or something like that, just to get a more even exposure. Um, so yeah, once you've set your ISO and everything, you're ready to go. Now you need to just go outside and, and get ready to shoot. You'll set your aperture, set your, your shutter speed according to what your light meter says on the inside of your, your range finder or your viewfinder. And then after that, you're ready to go. All right, so that's it for the Nikon FE2 review. This is my favorite film camera ever, my favorite Nikon film camera ever, and I hope you're able to get your hands on it. If you do, feel free to send us some example shots that you have and let us know what you think, if it's good, if it's garbage, what, what your opinions are on the Nikon FE2. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching and peace out, guys.